Hey guys, my name is Joel Gomez. I'm a comic book artist and illustrator. I recently partnered with my friends at Blick Art Materials just to share with you how I go about using kind of an imaginative twist uh, in my art. Using my comic book experience and background, uh, we'll try to infuse or incorporate uh, tools or methods in that kind of principle into just a daily sketch. So uh, let's check it out. We have a beautiful scenic shot here that we'd like to incorporate into today's sketch. Uh, kind of going with a sci-fi vibe today, so let's see what we can do and uh, let's get to drawing. I loosely kind of laid in all my uh, natural elements, got large trees in the foreground here, kind of framing um, the way I wanted to compose this image. So I'm trying to take the opportunity here to uh, take what I'm seeing uh, in front of me and utilizing it in a way to create um, a sense of storytelling, a narrative in the art. I'm not drawing literally what I see. I'm trying to get the impression of it and maybe be inspired uh, by it. I'm always fascinated with the juxtaposition of like really far out space tech. Uh, in a very natural setting. Uh, it's kind of nice contrast. I've kind of worked out most of the line art now uh, and I'm gonna go back in now with my uh, darker and uh, thicker line work. I'll be using my Pigma uh, brush pens, my uh, bold and my medium point, uh, kind of to vary up the size of the, the ink work done on the art here. So let's give it a shot. I generally like to get in there first with the line art. Uh, holding lines, so to speak, and uh, build up the drawing from there. And I kind of use the opportunity to sort of um, sculpt the drawing, if, if for lack of a better description. And it uh, gives me a better idea of where I want to place the shadows of the objects I'm drawing. Kind of throwing some of these lines uh, to create a sense of speed or movement. Trying to create the sense of huge amount of time passing. You know, maybe uh, this mech stumbled across something from another another time maybe decades ago a war a battle or something or maybe he's checking up on an old foe choosing to add a bit of shadow to these foreground trees to create a sense of depth give you a sense that they're really in the foreground here of uh, this image i really enjoy using this toned paper it kind of gives a uh, a starting point to really help you get a sense of uh, not just staring at a blank piece of paper and uh, it almost helps you with your drawing uh, to an extent because uh, you lay a couple of lines down and with the value of the paper already there you can get the illusion of depth. I'll probably still go back in after all of this and add another layer of line art just to give something in the back uh, a little again more depth and make it seem less flat. But I, I choose to do that after so that I don't in, unintentionally darken it in. It only works if it is completely different from the foreground element. So if it has um, shadow or heavy like rendering or black, it, it doesn't create the illusion I'm going for. So I like to put it in last. I'm thinking about adding a big white area too. Uh, uh, into the background to add another layer that I hope will pop against all these other things I'm doing. It's like a symphony of, <laughs> of value and, uh, and lines. So I'll be using my uh, Koi coloring brush pen set. I really enjoy the uh, warm gray tones. Lately I've been using them more for the brown tonal paper. It's a good complimentary kind of thing going on there with it. So let's see, let's give these a, let's give these a whirl. I move fairly quickly with these, like I don't get too caught up with the, the, the way it renders as much as I'm more concerned with the, the values I'm trying to create. I, I mean, I, you can get caught up with rendering something and it get it real feathered and really nicely rendered, but I'm more concerned with the, the action and creating some sort of movement uh, with them. So what I'll do now is probably go back in with another gray, maybe a darker one, and just kiss a couple of spots here and there to push the idea. And I want to save my lightest gray for the foliage I'm going to put further back and help to create a sense of depth. So 
I'll keep that lightest gray, um, light warm gray. I'll keep the light warm gray for the very, very, very back. So I, it just helps it to work in threes, you know, foreground, middle ground, background, uh, three values of gray. Um, they all help create that illusion. All right, so I'm going to start working on this further background foliage uh, that's creating this sense of depth and it's supposed to be behind the Mac and behind everything in the foreground here. So for this specific purpose, uh, instead of the 05 micron that I was using earlier for everything else, I'm going to choose to use the 03. Uh, again, it helps create that illusion of depth. Anything closer to you would be thicker and bigger, whereas things that recede in space will be smaller and thinner. It's getting to a point where using the values I wanted, adding the black and the dark gray and the line art, I'm starting to see the piece come together and now it's getting to a point where I need to just hit those finer details as opposed to continue rendering or adding more foliage or adding more black. It's like we're getting to a point where enough is enough. So um, at this stage, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and add the white around that section. Let's see if it's gonna work. erasing some of this out. I really want it to look crisp in that area. So already you can kind of see like I'm using the black here to frame everything here and it's almost like it's kind of got a cradling thing and he's in the center his shadow pulling you in here and hopefully leading you right to this guy. The uh, 08 jelly roll pen uh, just again just gonna pick certain areas to kiss with the white pen there. I'll touch on the two main parts I want affected first, uh, being the uh, the mech and then our uh, our downed old soldier here. Just because first and foremost, those should be the points of interest. Now I'm just kind of picking and choosing areas. I'm not very careful with the line. I'm just creating marks that impressionistic. Maybe it's just more my style that uh, I'd like the, the reader to fill some of that in on their own. I refer to the viewer as the reader because it's not comics per se, but it's storytelling. And to me, in some ways, what I do, everything should have a story to it. And so I always think of what I'm doing is, what are you saying? What's the story in this image? So right now I see throughout this shot, there's a lot of little colorful plants. And I thought, I'd, I don't know, just throw those in. All right, got our framing devices with our trees. Uh, we've got our foreground element, um, specifically our down soldier, and a mech here in the middle ground area. And we got our foliage further back. Uh, put it in, let me darken up these birds a little. That's, I think I'm all done, that's, that's our shot. All right, thanks so much for joining me, guys. I had a blast working on that tonal paper uh, using some of my favorite tools, the uh, Pigma Micron and the Jelly Roll Pen from Sakura of America. Really love using those tools, some of my favorites. Uh, thanks again, guys, and uh, take care.